I've gotten a lot of requests for Clone Wars lightsabers, so today I'm gonna make Gunji's lightsaber. Gunji was a Wookiee Jedi Padawan. Being among the top of his class, he was sent to Elam with four of his fellow Jedi younglings. While there, the Padawans were instructed by Jedi Master Yoda to enter a crystal cave to find their kyber crystals, which were necessary for the construction of their lightsabers. He chose to construct his lightsaber with a wooden grip, thus making it distinct from all others. So first I'm gonna have to find some scrap wood. There's a dial from your local hardware store. I think I'm gonna measure out that length. Oh, and it won't all fit in the shot. That's great. Yeah, yeah, there, there we go. Let's just not knock over anything important over there. All right, so this should be scaled to a Wookiee, but that's gonna look totally ridiculous if a human's holding it. So for comparison, I'm gonna try and scale it to a human-sized lightsaber. You know what, lightsabers are all different length. Let's add the bend saber and split the difference. Every time. Eh, I'm sure it's nothing to worry about. You'd think that would happen with the uh, Skywalker lightsaber, cause uh, you know, younglings. Okay, so the wooden part's really just the grip, which almost runs the length of the whole thing. I'm gonna say it's about there at, uh, what is that, 12 inches? 10. And I do wanna draw in those swoopy bits just cause that'll save me some time if I can chop that off. I cut it down to size with a coping saw. I actually have a chop saw. I could get this done in like half a second. But YouTube's favoring longer form content right now, so. Oh, uh, it's okay, it's just a heating element. So is the chop saw safer? I kinda think it is. All right, yeah, that's about the right lane should chop that off. Though. Oh wait, you know what I did want to do was drill into this because it's going to be a pain to drill on an angle like that. Where's my impact driver? Now I can use this drill. Then I drilled out the center because we're going to need to fit some other parts in there later. This is much easier to do with a flat surface than a slanted surface, which is why I'm doing this first. I like to do a guide hole first. It's less likely for the smaller bit to veer off. I'm also going to do one from the opposite side because I know there's gonna have to be a little alcove in here. Oh wait, actually I've heard stories of people, the thing bouncing and drilling into your fingers, so you shouldn't hold on to that, the vice will be enough. So you do that and then you move to your largest bit. All right, flipped it over. Not quite gonna be halfway. as far as we're gonna get. Well, I can feel how much lighter that is. It really doesn't have to be perfect. Can I cut it at that way? Because will that be easier for you guys to see? As I ask you from the future where you can do nothing. Once the hole was drilled out, I went back in with the coping saw and then cut the ends to be diagonal. Ooh, I'm sawing into some electronics. Just got a little bit easier because I crossed into the uh, hole that I drilled. And now, we're out of it, so it's getting a little bit harder. But evening out as we cross the curve. There we go, that's an interesting piece. I'm gonna save that, that could be like a piston. I have to clean it up, but I think that'll look good. Okay, so we only got like half an inch deeper that time, but now, good cricket fully. Then I smoothed them out on my belt sander. I did a little bit of prep work on the hill, but realized I need to go back in and make a sketch. This may take a while. So that's why I really need a lathe. I sketched the rough shape of the slope onto the hilt with a pencil. This is admittedly kind of 2D, but it just helps me visualize how the rest of it should be if I can at least see one angle first. Like the edges have to come in this much and this has to come out a little bit more than this. So a lot of sanding on the exterior, a little bit of sanding on the interior. Yeah, so I'm just gonna have to press it down like that and then do the spinny thing to even it out. Be so much faster if I had to lay the guys. Sanding was proving tedious, so I gave whittling a shot. Cause you know, whittling isn't tedious at all. It's actually working better. I went through a multitude of bladed tools for this. Please support me on Patreon so I can buy a lathe. This is taking for goddamn ever. I suppose I'm getting some valuable exercise. <sighs> Seriously, there's gotta be a faster way to do this. Aha! 
Support me on Patreon so I don't have to use hand-me-down tools from the Soviet Union. That's not a knife. It's a sickle. Well, I guess this is as good a time as any for the patron scroll. Those are the names of the people supporting me. They're the reason I was able to produce this video at all, despite my lack of lathe. As the pandemic has eliminated 50% of my income, I rely on them now more than ever. If you'd like to join them so that I can continue to make these videos and even improve the quality, scope, and just general awesomeness, then you can do so by following the link in the description down below. I alternated between whittling and sanding to get the desired taper, but generally, I use the whittling method for shaping. Bonjour, moi and the sanding method for smoothing afterwards. And here's what I ended up with. So I've been trying to get it to go all the way through. It hasn't quite yet. Honestly, it doesn't make any sense. I think that um, uh, this end is on an angle a bit, which may cause some problems later. Uh, but I'm actually gonna leave it that way for now because in order to get full varnish coverage, I'm gonna have to stick it on a post, which is gonna be more difficult if uh, the tunnel goes all the way through. The bottom end, I guess the pommel, let's call it, has a lot wider of an opening than what I've got here. So I widened that out with my rotary sanding tool. I actually destroyed a couple of drum bits doing this. So I switched to a narrow one and that worked out pretty well. The sanding process took off most of the varnish that was left over from some previous build. So I'm gonna have to reapply it. So I varnished that up making sure to put down cardboard to protect my workspace because it will drip and this stuff takes forever to dry okay so I've raised it up on this little skewer in order to get every single angle all at once however because of gravity the varnish is gonna pool down at the bottom and it's gonna be darker down there now I may be able to get away with this because the bottom when I flip it over the emitter end is gonna be covered up with metal but I'm betting that I'm gonna have to do a second coat and in that situation I'm just going to flip it upside down so that it pools on the other end and hopefully evens out. I don't have to do a middle section on like a pig roaster. Luau, as it's called. Just like 4th of July Luau. That is a six to eight hour cure time. And when it was dry, I did decide to go back and do another coat. I flipped it this time because yes, the emitter did come out a lot darker due to gravity, my nemesis. The more layers you do, the darker it will come out. And generally it dries a little bit lighter of a shade than when you first apply it. So I kind of expected to spend several days coating this. See, the one in the show is actually more, it's almost like bark, it's really chewed up and asymmetrical so a little bit of asymmetry there is like yeah whatever what are you gonna do Okay, so yeah, it did actually take several days. While I waited for that to dry, I got to work on the metal details. I made these primarily out of EVA craft foam. I used an EVA foam dowel for the pommel. I temporarily secured them to an off cut from the original dowel while I painted them. I did this because it was the same diameter as the widest part of the hilt, but also I didn't want to get any of the silver paint onto my painstakingly carved version. And this is a lot, lot easier than masking. I don't have a lot of luck with masking. Some paint always seems to sneak under. And you know that's gonna happen with a, a wood grain surface. Since the foam is absorbent, you're going to have to do multiple coats of paint. Normally I'd seal it with something like Plasti Dip or a gloss black house paint, which I think, yeah, gloss black would work better, but um, it's kind of overkill for something this small. I think these needed three layers each. However, I'm not quite done because I had to try and fix that curve shape. This was angular. I'm trying to turn it into a curve using Alex Dry. So they call it Alex fast dry because it supposedly dries in 20 minutes and yeah if you put down a paper thin schmear of it then sure it will dry in 20 minutes but any sort of depth that number will increase I think that's gonna have to do because this has to be ready to film with in like two hours when both the paint and varnish had dried, I put the emitter on the hilt. Now we're almost done, but first we need a kyber crystal. Luckily, I happen to make kyber crystals. How convenient! Available for purchase in my Etsy store. Link below! So I'm just gonna swipe one from my inventory, mount it into the pommel along with an LED light. This is what I use to cut holes of this diameter. This is just a pen grip. You can use a regular pen casing, but this is metallic and the edge is a little serrated, so that's why I like to use it. Trying to get that centered. It doesn't really matter because it's on the bottom of the saber. Oh yeah, great. So that one's going on the inside. Here, how about I start it? What I was about to say was, it's nice to attempt some symmetry. It's also nice to actually get some symmetry. Yeah, I can make that work. So now we've gotten that deep. It's a little more than halfway. So shove that in there. I'm just gonna twist it. Oh, you hear that? That is one ugly apple core. Okay, so, all right, just got a green blade, so let's grab a green one. Oh no, it's too, it's too wide. 
It's too thick. And voila, one wooden lightsaber. In order for the beam effect to look believable, you sort of have to do a combination of a CGI and real life blade. What I like to do is a variation of what they did for the original trilogy. I put reflective tape on a pipe. So close. All right, so we're gonna need another strip of tape for that. And then shine as bright a light as possible onto it, such as my car with the high beams on. Then I embellish the glow and post. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this build. Once again, I wanna thank my patrons for making these videos possible. If you wanna join them, there's a link down below in the description, as well as a link to my Etsy store store where I sell my custom kyber crystals. If you can't afford any of that but you want to keep up with these videos, then be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. And until the next tutorial comes out, you can check out any of the hundreds of past tutorials I've done. Happy crafting everyone. See you later. Hey, by the way, I'm also selling this saber in the Etsy store right now just because, you know, I wasn't kidding about the pandemic affecting my industry right now.